Hey, have you heard about this thing called the Amazing Digital Circus? It's this cartoon on YouTube that has absolutely blown up over the last few months. I'm talking memes, cosplays, trending TikTok sounds, fan arts, the works. And it has not slowed down a bit. So what's the deal? Well, the Amazing Digital Circus is part of the wonderful world of independent animation. An ever-growing side of the animation industry filled with intense creativity, unique ideas, long, long gaps in between uploads, uh, reliance on Patreon to offset intense production costs, and soul crushingly intense amounts of work. It's great! And The Amazing Digital Circus is a new pilot short created by the animator and musician Gooseworks and produced by Australian indie animation studio Glitch Productions. Which, uh, if you're not familiar, uh, a pilot is basically a proof of concept episode used to pitch a potential show to a network, or in this case, an audience on YouTube, to see if it's worth pursuing a full series. The first teaser for The Amazing Digital Circus was released back in January of 2023, and the full-fledged pilot dropped back on October 13th, 2023. And considering that video is currently sitting at over 220 million views. I, 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 yeah, I'd say it was a pretty successful pilot. So let's talk about it. Yeah, spoilers ahead for uh, for the one episode. So this show takes place in, yeah, surprise, surprise, the amazing digital circus, which is some kind of unexplained alternate world that exists inside of a computer. Almost like a virtual reality. Hold up. And the first thing we see in the show is, oh, oh, look at that. He got teeth face. This uh, creature is Kane, the ringmaster of the digital circus whose head is teeth and his face is teeth and his eyes are in his teeth and he wears a top hat. As far as I can tell, uh, he's the boss around here. He controls everything, has the ability to more or less bend reality to his will, and is the guy that everyone else seems to report to. Oh, and then there's everyone else. You got Gangle, a little ribbon creature with one of those comedy tragedy mask things going on. There's Zubal, who's... Yeah. Uh, that. There's this King Chess piece with concerning mental issues. We have Ragatha, one of those old Raggedy Ann dolls. Jax, who you are already writing fanfic about in your head, don't lie to me. Yeah, he's a wisecracking purple version of Max from Sam and Max, and he's just kind of a dick to everyone. Then there's Kofmo, or not. And finally, we got our main character, this person. They are new to the circus, literally popping in right in the middle of the theme song. And we don't know much about them or who they were before this moment, but what we do know is that they were a person who put on a VR headset, got transported to the amazing digital circus, and can't escape. And what's worse, uh, they can't even remember their name. Uh, my name is, uh... Uh! Yeah, apparently no one can remember their name when they enter the circus. So, Kane randomly generates them a new one, Pomni. And now things start to make some sense. All these wacky characters are people who also used to be just normal human beings with like jobs and tax returns until they got sucked into this digital world and now have no way to leave. They got new wacky bodies and kooky names and now they live day by day going on cartoony adventures created by Kane as a way to keep them all busy. Because if they aren't kept busy, they all just might lose their minds and abstract. Speaking of, uh, where's Kofmo again? This looks fine. This looks fine! So Kofmo abstracted, which again means he lost his mind and his digital form corrupted into this big thing covered in eyes. And he just start rampaging through the circus tent, knocking out Ragatha and making her go all glitchy. So Pomni, still not sure if any of this is even real, goes searching for Kane to get some help for Ragatha. But in doing so, she accidentally stumbles upon this exit door. Yeah, they've been seeing this thing appearing and disappearing on and off this entire time, but no one believed them when they said it was real. But this time they were actually able to to get to the door before it vanished and hop through it. On the other side though, is what looks like a normal, painfully boring office building. And every door just leads to another boring office room. And another, and another, and another, and another, and another. Pomni keeps running through every single door until they stop and see this desk with a grody old computer and a VR headset sitting on it. They just kind of stare at it for a while and then break out into hysterical laughter. Yeah, you know, this probably means something. Maybe this is where they were originally sitting or working when they got sucked into the digital circus. Yeah, maybe they're just realizing they're going in circles. I don't know, I'm not really a theory guy. I'll leave that up to Matt Pat. Oh. Eventually, the office labyrinth ends and Pomni accidentally falls out into this infinite white void. Kane zaps in to save them and the two return to the tent. Kane then sends the abstracted Kofmo into the cellar where we see that clearly this is not the first time someone's abstracted like this. Then he snaps his fingers and fixes up Ragatha who was still all glitchy. Yeah, I forgot about that. And finally, he admits that the exit wasn't real. It's something he was working on because of how much everyone wanted an exit to exist, but he never got around to finishing it 
it, so it eventually just let out into that infinite void, which is why he kept denying it was real. Meaning Pomni really just is stuck here. The gang wrap up their day by sitting down for a digital feast. That dramatic orchestra music that you've probably heard all over TikTok starts playing. We zoom way out to see that same computer desk again, and that is the amazing digital circus. And wow, this is just an outstanding pilot. I gave you the basic rundown just now, but please do yourself a favor and watch the whole thing. When this video is done, I swear to God, if you click away, I will find you. But seriously, uh, the pilot is so worth watching if you haven't already. I didn't even get into the B-plot with this big worm thing and the gloinks, I don't know. There's just so much here to take in. The animation is bright, colorful, bouncy, fluid, fast paced, and just all around really charming. Now I've actually been familiar with the work of the show's lead animator, Kevin Temmer, for a while now. Now they've got a pretty immediately recognizable style and bounce to their work, so I was not surprised to see they were connected to this project in such a major way. Then on top of the animation, the writing is just fantastic. I know you might look at something like this and think of things like Poppy Playtime, My Friendly Neighborhood, that bear game, and a bunch of other indie horror stuff that kind of takes a bright, colorful, family-friendly premise and turns it into a horror thing. And while there's definitely some horror elements at play here, I was surprised at just how much of a straight comedy this show was. And it's pretty much my exact style of humor. You know, fast-paced, fourth-wall-breaking meta humor with a bit of a spooky edge has been a weakness of mine ever since I was a kid. This show would have fit perfectly between Baby Fofy's viewings of Invader Zim and the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. But you know, it's not just the comedy. The plot of this pilot is packed with the exact Exact right amount of creativity, surreal concepts, world building, intrigue, and like breadcrumbs to theorize about to get you immediately hooked. Just the basic setup of can Pomni even leave is enough to have me ready for a full season. So yeah, I got into this immediately and I am so excited to see where it goes. But that's the thing, at least right now, this one video is all we got. Animation takes a lot of time, especially indie animation. This stuff is time consuming and expensive. So even though that view count means we are 100% getting more amazing digital circus, I have absolutely no clue how long that wait's gonna be. Be. But if the internet's good at anything, it's taking one cool thing and just running with it. Stretching what little material we've got for weeks and weeks and months and months until we, I don't know, get distracted. And this channel's no stranger to grasping at straws, so what's all out there for us new Amazing Digital Circus fans to enjoy while we wait for episode two? Well, luckily, Glitch Productions, Gooseworks, and some other people attached to the project have released some extra Digital Circus content. It mainly things like behind the scenes stuff, interviews, and some like supplementary mini content. The previously mentioned lead animator, Kevin Temmer, has uploaded a handful of really interesting behind the scenes videos on clips he animated for the series. So if you're an animation fan and want a little peek into the process for this show, uh, these these are really cool to watch. Glitch Productions uploaded the pilot's full soundtrack on YouTube, so not only can you hear the pilot's music in full, including that viral track from the ending, but I also really like the more detailed look you can get at the pilot's backgrounds, especially this one of The Void. The art is so nice, such a good style. If you're looking for more of the show's characters though, Glitch did an ad with a bunch of the different voice actors jumping in and out of character, all to promote this big live stream that's over now. Sorry, I got I got to all this late. But the video itself is still a fun watch and showcases all the voice actors really well. And that live stream that I didn't get to watch so I can't actually talk about was hosted by another YouTuber who watches too many cartoons, Saberspark. And while I was writing this video, Saberspark uploaded their own big podcasty video interviewing the entire cast of the show. So there's that, two. And of course, there's always... It could be our pudgy Jacks plushie. Now some of you might be thinking, wait, they already had merch ready to sell as soon as the pilot aired? What is, what's up with that? But hold your horses, keyboard cat. Yeah, I know merch can be a bit of a divisive thing on YouTube, depending on who's peddling it, but this isn't some cynical cash grab or anything. Merch sales are an absolutely key factor to making sure large scale independent projects like this get the funding they need to continue. If you want more amazing digital circus, they're gonna have to sell some shirts. And honestly, the stuff they're selling does look pretty cool. I don't actually have any of it, but I definitely got my eye on a couple of things. The Pomni and Jax plushies are super cute, but man, that color blocked cane shirt is calling out to me. It's saying, put me on your skin. And of course, I mention all this because one of the only other pieces of official Digital Circus video content left at the time that I'm writing this is a merch ad. And weirdly enough, I think it's maybe the closest thing to episode two that we've got so far, as silly as that might sound. Same characters, same voice actors, same writing and sense of humor, same slightly unsettling vibe, just, you know, selling merch instead of telling a story. Yeah, you can really tell I'm stretching for extra stuff to talk about, can't you? I mean, until episode two drops, that really is the majority of the amazing Digital Circus official stuff there is to talk about. But what I wanna do now is like zoom out a bit. Too far. 
There we go. Because while yes, The Amazing Digital Circus is a fantastic cartoon pilot with tons of promise for a greater series, I also think it's a great example of a larger recent trend in like YouTube history. Yeah, remember when this channel used to be about that? I kind of miss talking about YouTube history, so I want to get back to it from time to time. And in the world of YouTube animation, The Amazing Digital Circus is just the latest in a long line of independent animation projects that either exist mainly on YouTube or gain their audience through YouTube. Yeah, obviously going way back, you had animated series released by companies like Rooster Teeth, you know, stuff like Red vs. Blue and Ruby. But it feels like lately there's been a really noticeable surge of independent animated pilots and shows that are not only of amazing quality, but are also just some of the biggest things on YouTube, animated or otherwise. The first one I remember seeing pop up was uh, Bibsy Pop's pilot for Has Been Hotel back in what, 2019. It's been four years? Man, I've I really am late to this. But yeah, I remember this pilot dropping on YouTube and just absolutely taking over, along with another pilot from the same creator that dropped just the next month called Hell of a Boss. Both of these shows were huge. To this day, those initial videos have 93 million and 61 million views respectively. Hell of a Boss has been running on YouTube for multiple seasons, and Has Been Hotel has been deep in production with its first full season premiering on Amazon Prime this month, with season two apparently already greenlit. All from a start right here on YouTube. YouTube. Then there were shows like Worthy Kids Big Top Burger in 2020. This is one of the most surreal and hilarious cartoons I've seen online for a while, and I highly recommend the two seasons that are out. Though, because the shorts are only a couple minutes long, uh, each season's only about the length of one normal pilot episode, and just keep that in mind, but lord are these good. There's Monkey Wrench, which launched last year, and while it's not experienced the same level of viral success, it's still managed to gain a following and release three episodes with the help of fan support. And that same year, there was also an astonishingly animated pilot release called Lackadaisy, which is an adaptation of a webcomic that appears to have been running since like the mid 2000s. This pilot currently sits at 12 million views and again, thanks to fan support, crowdsourced the funding for a full season. And of course, Glitch Productions themselves have been running indie animated series for like three years now on their YouTube channel. And then there's the amazing Digital Circus, which after doing a quick rundown of all those other fantastic indie pilots, I think we should really revisit that insane view count. Has Been Hotel became one of the biggest things on YouTube with less than 100 million views gained over the course of the last few years. Amazing Digital Circus has more than doubled that in just a few months. Like, don't get me wrong, this, this is not a competition. No piece of art is any more or less valid due to its view count. I only bring it up to provide extra context to just how unbelievable this is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but off the top of my head, I just can't think of any other indie animation pilots that got this big this fast. This video and the other pilots like it are by far some of the most exciting and interesting things happening in the animation world. But I don't think they get enough credit for being such a landmark in YouTube history. For years now, the prevailing idea has been that while animation could potentially thrive on YouTube, it would either be fighting an uphill battle against the YouTube algorithm or would have to undergo some intense compromises. But then here's a wealth of creators and teams putting in the work to make stuff that just seems to defy all YouTube norms. Big, flashy, beautifully animated, animated, well-written shorts that are beyond TV quality, earning dedicated audiences ready and willing to help support these shows to continue, and all while pulling views that only people like Mr. Beast tend to see. It's crazy. It's crazy. And The Amazing Digital Circus is just the latest success story continuing to solidify independent animation's place both on YouTube and in the industry at large. I truly cannot wait to see what's next. No. Seriously, I, I can't wait. Normally the shows I talk about have been over for years. What am I supposed to do when I actually have to wait for more? Be patient, do other stuff? That's not how I function. Oh well, into the void for me. Woo!